Now, our next guests have founded a company aimed at smashing the glass ceiling by teaching young women how to lead. Girled World is helping to create the next generation of female entrepreneurs. Its co-founders are Madeleine Gromit and Edwina Kolomansky. They're with us in the studio now. Very good morning to the both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So what is Girled World? So Girled World is an ed tech startup and we've created this business to try and build the next generation of female leaders and founders across Australia. And it came from you essentially, Madeleine, thinking about your daughters and where they'd be in 10, 15, 20 years time. Yeah, look, it did. I mean, I get to live with our, with our customer group. I've got four girls, uh, age 15, 14, 12 and 8. And I did look in at that and think, what sort of future are they stepping into? Yeah. How do we equip them with the skills that they need, you know, the mindsets and the tech sets to really step in and participate in the future of work. And we know the numbers around gender workforce participation aren't great. Mm. So what we did was came up with what we think is a pretty awesome solution to helping that the numbers move. And tell us about how the both of you came together. Edwina, how did you meet Madeleine and this yes. all started? So Madeleine and I met last year at the Wade Institute of Entrepreneurship at the University of Melbourne. And we might look like a bit of an odd couple because there is t about 20 years between us. Mm. But as yeah, I Mad could have given birth to her. <laughs> <laughs> but as Madeleine said, no. um, yeah. she's got daughters and I've just come out of the educational system. So I guess I've got a bit more of a, um, a, a hand on the pulse yeah. in terms of uh, what girls are facing today. Yeah, so that's a very couple. important point. Yes, yes. So if, finger on the pulse. What, what do girls really need that they're not getting now mm -hmm. to help propel them to those future leadership roles? Well, the world, as we know, is changing so rapidly, particularly around the access to technology and the world around us is is destabilising, it's fragmenting. So what we really believe is that we empower girls with the skill sets, the mindsets, the tech sets, and most importantly, the visible female role models so that they can see what they can be. Mm. Yeah, and that's a really a big part of it, right? The importance of representation. Tell us a bit more about that. I mean, you know, you've got young girls. Is this something that they talk to you about, the importance of knowing, you know, if they see people in that roles, they can know what they can work towards? Yeah, I think it's a great point, Del. I mean, we don't have enough women leading, you know, countries, founding businesses. And I think there's the whole, girls can't be what they can't see, mm. you know. And one of the big mottos I live by is, do as I do, not as I say. If mm. The most powerful role modelling you can do for young people is to get out there and, and be the best you can. And so, we, we really need to show girls that, that they've got future pathways and possibilities if they can build themselves now and equip themselves with these enterprise skill sets. So these are the things in the future of work like problem solving, teamwork, design thinking, you know, digital literacy. This is what they're going to need because in their futures, they're going to have up to 17 jobs in a disrupted work landscape. At, at the very <laughs> least. And of, often this conversation, Edwina, goes to schools teaching girls or uh, propelling girls into science, technology, engineering and maths mm -hmm. courses. Uh, but is that the be all and end all? Uh, and uh, and com as somebody coming from the sector, are, are schools, are the education systems doing enough in that centre? Well, that I form? think that if they were, a business like us wouldn't exist. And we understand that STEM is one area that girls are vastly underrepresented, particularly in leadership positions, but that extends to a, num a vast number of other areas, including politics, media, sport. It, uh, it just keeps going. So um, it's really important that a business like us does exist because schools aren't bridging the gap between their school system, the tertiary system, and then the workforce. Yeah. And you've just recently had a conference as well. So tell us about how that went. Yeah, so the summit was amazing. Something pretty powerful happened this weekend. We had women fly out from all over the world, from some of the biggest sharing economy startups in the world, including Airbnb, Atlassian. Uh, we had STEM champions all coming into this room to talk to the girls, tell them their stories and unpack their skills. And it was pretty magical. Like okay. the girls in the room were completely ignited. We, we started to really reshape them, I think. And that's the whole point is how do you ignite this new innovation generation? So they're excited about what they can do into the future. Is there enough focus on innovation at the moment? More broadly speaking, we, we know there was that big splash shortly after Malcolm Turnbull became Prime Minister mm -hmm. with the $1 billion innovation statement. It's gone off the boil a bit at the moment. Yeah, I agree with you. The Prime Minister sent, uh, he endorsed our event and sent his best wishes. We had Kelly O'Dwyer open the event on his behalf. Um, I think the government has set a high agenda for innovation. What we know is Australia isn't performing well enough mm -hmm. at the moment and that in order to create the new growth and opportunities of the future, the new jobs of yeah. the future, um, that we need to do better to equip that next gen. So the work needs to be done actually at the beginning of the pipeline, yeah. Yeah. not at the end. And you guys are very much targeting secondary year students, aren't you? Why that particular age group? It's a really great question. And we did do a lot of research through our master's thesis, looking at the whole pipeline and looking at uh, the 
measures taken at the end of towards the end of the pipeline, including um, board quotas and gender quotas in that respect. And we thought that that was a bit of a it's great, but it's not how you solve a problem. You've got to start at where the problem begins. And that's when girls start to have educational autonomy in, in the subjects that they're, they're, they're choosing. Yeah. We wish you both all the best. And uh, hopefully there might be a few chief executives or prime ministers emerging from the weekend events. Absolutely. Yeah, and they will wonderful. shape the world. Yes. <laughs> I, I, absolutely. No doubt. As a father of a daughter, I, I wish you well. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Great work, ladies. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Cheers.